Hello friends, welcome back today. We've got some fun stuff to look at. Today, I've got a beautiful block of ahi tuna, which we are gonna transform into something very spectacular. So you'll wanna watch. Along with the tuna, we've got some of our crab meat left over from yesterday's grilled cheeses. I'm gonna use this as well. And we're gonna combine these things with a little fresh asparagus and make a very classic dish. This is kind of an old steakhouse thing. I think originally it was done with veal, and now you see it every once in a while as a throwback kind of menu item with steak, um, but it's basically called an Oscar. And what that means is it's topped with, uh, are you rest put? Yeah, they're all, we've got a lot of them up on our website. Not all of the ones from these videos, but they are, I am trying to add them as we go. Um, so yes, you can find recipes on our website. So this is a classic old school recipe, again, uh, and we're doing it with tuna today. So we're gonna to do a tuna Oscar instead of a steak Oscar or a veal Oscar. Again, this is pretty classic, um, but very delicious. Uh, and it takes very few ingredients uh, and just a little bit of technique. So what I'm gonna start first is I got my pan going and I kinda of wanna warm up my asparagus a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little oil to this pan and I'm gonna get this going while I start getting everything else ready. So I'm just gonna add a little vegetable oil to the pan along with my asparagus. So I've got just some asparagus spears here I'm going to toss in. Some of these I'm going to wind up chopping up and some of them I'm going to use as garnish. So we're going to kind of do a mixed bag of things here. Got my tuna. This is a really nice block of tuna that I cut um, specifically for this. You could do this with a regular tuna steak and that would be totally fine too. Um, there's kind of a, a lot of different ways to go. You don't have to get fussy with it. But again, we're going for kind of that steakhouse classic feel. So I want to. And that is entirely up to you again. How fussy you get with a recipe like this is completely on you. Um, but sometimes it's fun to get fun and have a nice presentation of things. Now this is a really big block of tuna here. I'm looking at like an inch and a half all the way around. So I want this seasoned really, really well on all sides. Because what we're gonna wind up doing is giving this a quick sear on each side. Uh, about 30 seconds per side, so two minutes in total on this, and keep this really nice and rare. So I've got that seasoned. I seasoned up the asparagus a little bit too, which I'm just gonna kinda toss around in our pan. Again, I just kinda wanna cook this through pretty simply. Nothing super crazy or extravagant. Uh, and then the other part of an Oscar is a hollandaise sauce. So hollandaise is something that I've been asked a lot about. Like people want to see how to make it because everybody assumes it's pretty hard and it really isn't that difficult. So again, I want to show you how to do that and walk you through it. So this asparagus is coming along pretty well. I'm almost done. It's blanched pretty well. It's got a little bit of a char to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Like so. And now, well that happens, I'm gonna start searing my tuna. So I'm gonna cook my tuna first, and then I'm gonna start off the side and let it rest while I do the cook, uh, cooking of my sauce. So I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to this pan here, and again, I'm looking for about two minutes in total sear on this tuna. Nothing crazy. Um, but I just want to flash sear it. Again, we want to keep this mostly raw on the inside. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to turn up my heat. Because again, I want a good, hot, high sear on this. And we're going to, again, just flash sear. Pretty easy to do. I know a lot of people are always concern, like I don't want to overcook my tuna. Well, the easiest way to not cook it is to try to get a nice big chunk. Um, if you were using a thinner steak, you know, again, about 30 seconds on each side is probably going to be enough to get you there. Okay, this is really hot. You hear that when it hits the pan? It does that sizzle? That's what I want. I'm going to sear, again, about 30 seconds on all sides, and then I'm going to pull it and just let it hang out. So this isn't going to take me too much. 
And while that's going again, I'm going to kind of prep and go over some of my other ingredients. So I've got a little lemon here, because we're going to need a little bit of lemon juice for our hollandaise. So I'm going to get this ready to go. Other essential elements for a hollandaise. All right, this is going real nice and fast. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn this. Already, we've got a little bit of a golden brown crust going on inside, which is great. Um, egg yolks, this is going to be a key component of our sauce, as well as quite a bit of cold butter. Cold butter, egg yolks, we need to emulsify those and bring those together into a sauce over pretty low, gentle heat. So I'm going to use a double boiler for that. So I've got a pot of water back here that I brought up to a simmer. And once this tuna is done, I'm going to switch it, bring it up here, and then I'll build the hollandaise for you. All right. So again, we want to give this tuna equal cooking time on all sides. That's going to make sure that that center is nice and even. Um, and we'll see how I do, obviously, when I cut it. You never know until it's done. And if it's not perfectly even, who cares? It's fine. It's still going to be delicious no matter how you cut it. So we want to make this really, really good, as best as we can. Again, it may take a little bit of practice getting used to searing tuna, but it's not that hard. Again, it's a few simple steps, and just making sure you're giving even time to all sides. And again, we want this rare, 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 basically raw in the middle. We don't want it cooked through at all. And I'm already almost done. I'm on my last side right now. Again, it's going to be about two minutes all in total and this is done no more work with the tuna i can see it's really nice already you know it's nice and cooked along all of the edges so this looks great so i can feel it's still nice and rare this is exactly what i want now last time we did tuna i did i did a sesame crust on it um, you could do that with this as well. That helps protect it a little bit more and is sometimes a little easier to cook. Um, all right, so I got my pot of boiling water. I'm gonna set it here. I'm actually gonna reduce my heat down because I just want this at a simmer. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a bowl. This is kind of a big bowl, but it's what I've got to work with. And I'm gonna put this over the top. So this is gonna come together fairly quickly. Um, it doesn't really take too long to make. And so I'm gonna get my butter all ready to go here. And the butter you wanna add in stages. So what I'm gonna do, it's getting hot. So I've got my egg yolks, which I'm gonna add right to my bowl here. And then I'm gonna start whisking because we don't want scrambled eggs. Now, if this starts to get too hot, take it off. You can alternate and go back and forth. I'm gonna add some of my lemon juice to this. And this is gonna add a little freshness, a little brightness. And that egg yolk is already starting to thicken up pretty well. So what I wanna do is start adding my cold butter. And the butter is gonna start, uh, help slow down the cooking process on those yolks. So I'm going to toss those in, and I'm going to just keep whisking. And we're going to slowly melt this butter in and create this really nice, rich sauce. Now again, this is a pretty classic steakhouse kind of thing. You could do this for your Benedicts. In fact, uh, if you didn't have the tuna and you just had the crab, you could definitely just pour this over some English muffins. I think I heard somewhere that it was National English Muffin Day today, so uh, maybe it's a good night for Benedicts. All right, so whisking, whisking, whisking. Again, it's getting nice and thick. And that butter is melting. Again, we want this very gentle. And we want to keep whisking and moving it because, again, the idea is to not make scrambled eggs here. So if you have to go on and off the heat, that's totally fine. You can see, I'll show you kind of what I'm working at here. See that nice golden brown, it's getting thick and nice, which is exactly what we want. Now again, this is a pretty large bowl for this. Normally I'd want a little bit of a smaller pot, a little bit of a smaller bowl. Um, helps control a little bit easier. 
um, especially if you're making like a smaller batch, not kind of an industrial sized thing. All right, so my butter is starting to emulsify in there pretty well, so I'm gonna cut a few more tablespoons here. And I'm gonna add that in. All in all, I'm probably gonna wind up using about a stick worth. And I'm just gonna keep on mixing. Mix in, mix in, mix in. Until we, again, just have a really beautiful, nice hollandaise. And I don't know if you can see in that bowl there. Again, we're looking pretty nice. You don't want to get, the reason you don't want your water boiling is because you don't want, especially if you're using a smaller bowl, you don't want it to steam up the side and the condensation start to build up and then accidentally wind up getting water into your sauce because that's going to ruin it. You don't want your hollandaise sauce to split. Um, and that's where people get a little bit of afraid of making hollandaise sauce because they don't want it to break. Because if that butter breaks and the milk solids separate from the fat, um, it can be kind of grainy, it won't look as pretty and nice. So you run into some issues there. All right, this is looking great. Looking really, really good. So I'm gonna toss in a little bit more butter because I want a little bit more sauce here. So maybe I'm gonna use closer to a stick and a half. I'll just go for it. Why not? Add that in. Stir, stir, stir. And again, that's nice and slowly melting. Looks like my flame shut off a little bit here. Went a little too low, so I turn that back on. Get this going. All right, this is looking great. And they've got that little lemoniness coming off of it, the rich egg yolks. Now these egg yolks are gonna be fully cooked. I know it's a sauce form, so people always get weird with egg yolks when they're a sauce because they're afraid it's not cooked. And it is. Um, this is definitely enough heat to cook this through. We've got that beautiful butter. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my asparagus. I'm gonna leave a few pretty pieces for my garnish. And I'm just gonna chop this kind of small, like so. This is gonna be great. I'm excited to see how the final dish turns out. I'm gonna add this to my hollandaise, like so. And I'm going to go back and stir, 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 stir. Beautiful. And now, actually, I'm going to just turn off my heat because we're good. I'm going to add my crab meat here. This is just the special crab meat. This is kind of the same stuff we used yesterday. And I'm going to Stir that into the mix as well. Again, this is pre-cooked, so we just want it to warm through. Beautiful. And now we've got this really beautiful kind of crab hollandaise here, which is exactly what we want to have. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to hit it with just a touch more lemon juice here and just kind of wake it back up a little bit. And get that stir together. It smells so fresh and lemony. It's really, really nice. I'm going to toss just a little bit more butter in because now that I've added all those other ingredients, it's a little thick. So I want to thin it out just a little bit more and make it a little bit saucier. This is just adjusting, you know, it's cooking and you want to, you know, the amount of butter is going to vary. Again, depending on how thick or thin you want it, if you're putting a bunch of stuff in here like I am, you know, you just got to kind of adjust your sauce. So I'm going to let that sort of come back and melt. And while that does its thing, let's get into slicing our tuna and see how I did there. Now, slicing tuna can be difficult because it's a delicate fish, 
So unless you have a really sharp knife, it can be hard to cut and want to tear. So you just want to be very gentle with it. So I'm just going to give my knife a little quick honing. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this. So I've got a really nice, beautiful, let's show you here, even cook around that tuna, which is exactly what I want to have happen. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut this into slices. Like so. Again, trying to be very careful not to tear the tuna. You want to really let the knife do the work in the slicing here. Because otherwise it's going to want to try to tear apart on you. But so far we're doing a pretty good job here. Beautiful. A few more little final cuts and we'll be good to go. So this, is, again, this is a very classic, very old school recipe. They we're kind of brightening up a little bit and modernizing a touch. Um, because we're having fun. And again, we've been, <laughs> we've been going pretty decadent this week, if you haven't noticed. And that's just because we wanted to do something a little different. So I've got my crab hollandaise. I've got my tuna. So let's get us uh, plated here. So I've got a little... Got my plate, which is what I want. I've got my tuna, which I've got just kind of fanned out here. Let's just kind of arrange it so you can see that beautiful pink color on the plate. That's excellent. Now, what I need is one of my spoons. This looks great. Pin this down. All right, let's see how well I can do this here. I'm just gonna spoon some of this hollandaise right over the top, that asparagus and that crab meat. And absolutely beautiful. spoon like this, but you know, we're doing what we do. Really quite fantastic. And if you're missing your steakhouses right now, again, this is a great, great thing to do. You could do this with, uh, Uh, you don't have to do this with tuna. Again, you could do this with steak. Steak is the traditional kind of way to go about it. But we have ourselves a pretty lavish little plate of food there. You can kind of see. Get that. So what we've got here, tuna Oscar. Really beautiful. You can see all that rich crab meat in there mixed in with the sauce. The asparagus is in there. Yeah, it's a little, you know, kind of bright vegetalness to it. So really good spring dish right here, really. So we're kind of in the right season for it. That tuna cooked real rare. It's got a little slice of lemon on the side. Absolutely beautiful. So this is the kind of thing, again, it doesn't take long to make. It's pretty easy to do. So I hope you do try this. Again, this is super fun. And I'm excited here, so make this, take your photos, like, comment, share, do all that stuff, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, definitely want to see what you're doing too. Uh, yeah, so thanks again for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow with some more fun stuff. 
So I hope you check back, you check it out. Uh, and if you come up with any questions, definitely leave them in the comments. I'll go through after and kind of scroll through and see what people are looking to know. Um, recommendations for dishes that you want to see, also highly recommended. Um, shoot them at me. I want to know what you want to know how to make and we'll walk through it together. So thanks again for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow and stay safe. Yeah.